Today, we give you a lecture about ICU diaries for patients in delirium. And my name is Teresa Detmer. I work as a psychologist in the intensive care unit at Jena University Hospital. Hello, everyone. I'm Peter Nadal from Kiel, North Germany. I'm a nurse and nursing researcher working also on the intensive care unit. We have now conflicts of interest. And our lecture is based on this publication, Use of Diaries in Intensive Care Unit, Delirium Patients, which is um, published in Critical Care Nursing Clinics of North America. And our purpose is to um, give you some knowledge about the purpose and use of ICU di diaries, about the use in delirious patients, and about probable benefits for patients and the families. Great. ICU diaries. The idea of writing a diary for critical care patients is write a diary during the period of patients' disturbances of consciousness so that he or she can read the diary afterwards and understand what happened. The purpose is a provided tool for recollection, recovery, coping, or communication. One wife said writing a diary entry is like writing a letter to another person. You go to the post, send the, the mail, and the person perceives this, um, receives this letter after a couple of days, mm -hmm, writing back and so on. And writing a diary for an ICU patient is close to this. Authors are staff, nurses, psychologists, physicians, therapists, and so on, the families, and also, of course, friends and uh, colleagues, and, and so on. Writing style should be common language so that the patient is able to understand what you are writing, no special um, ICU words, and, and so on. And uh, the topic is explain the whole journey from the admission over all these days, <clears throat> uh, write about milestones and uh, recovery and so on till discharge from the ICU. Handing over um, is very heterogeneous uh, worldwide, we, we can say, but in general, when the patient is awake again and asks for what happens, why I am so weak, or uh, where do all these dreams come from, then the moment is right to hand over the diary to the patient. Let us start with an example. We are talking about Mr. Smith. He is uh, 72 years old, married, has two children and a granddaughter. He is a little bit obese, of course, as a COPD and diabetes mellitus. Actually, he has a severe cold, which is progressing. And on the second night, his wife calls the ambulance um, because his breath is really worse and he's admitted to a hospital. In the evening, he becomes critical ill and is admitted to in the intensive care unit. Mrs. Smith is informed by telephone and of course shocked. She's calling her children and asking for help. Both are at risk for the post-intensive care syndrome or post-intensive care syndrome family. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. As you um, already mentioned, the wife is shocked. And so it is um, for patients and also for relatives that critical illness basically is a potentially traumatic event in the life of those uh, who are affected. And in addition, critical illness often results in uh, reduced health related quality of life. In addition to physical symptoms, also cognitive and psychological sequelae can occur. And these affect not only the patients, but also relatives. And around 30% um, suffer from psychological symptoms of depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress. As you know, these long-term consequences have been described as post-intensive care syndrome, which you can see on the right-hand side. Um, for survivors and post-intensive care syndrome family, which you can see on the uh, left-hand side for the, those symptoms um, who are um, experienced by family members a uh, long time after critical illness of the patient. And therefore, we, we should uh, take care for patients and um, also for the family as early as possible and give them psychosocial support and one of these um, yeah, 
little puzzle pieces of psychosocial support um, is the intensive care unit diary, which is a very important part. And here uh, we will show you our first um, entry of the diary of Mr. Smith, who Peter introduced you, uh, which has been written by nurse Betty on October the 10th. Today, you were admitted to the intensive care unit. You suffer from a severe pneumonia. When you were transferred to us, you were coughing and gasping for air. You seemed to be panicked, shouting for your life. I was holding your hand and trying to calm you, but your condition worsened. We decided to intubate you, connecting you to a ventilator, a kind of breathing machine. You are receiving sedation for sleeping. You, to help you to understanding your experiences, we are writing this diary for you. We hope that it will help you to understand what happened. Nurse Betty. Thank you, Teresa. Very nice entry. <laughs> Let us explain the, the diary entries. So the first entry in, in the diary should report the, the conditions that led to the admission on the intensive care unit. So here is a very short um, introduction, but today you were admitted to the intensive care unit. You suffer from a severe pneumonia. <clears throat> this is very important for patients. And we know today, Mr. Smith, for example, were admitted to the intensive care unit in an awake status. He had an awake consciousness. But when you will ask him uh, in a couple of weeks, he probably will not know that he was transferred to an intensive care unit and what was his conditions. So it's very important that the first entry um, is describing the, the journey to the intensive care unit so that the patient can understand what happened to him or her and why was it so important to be admitted to the intensive care unit. Further on, um, we should describe behaviors without any judgment, without uh, saying this was good or this was bad. Here, you seem to be panicked, shouting for your wife. So patients can recollect maybe uh, how they behaved, how they were, how the staff identified their needs, for example. This is very important for them. And describe also reactions uh, to patient's behavior. I was holding your hand, trying to calm you, but your condition worsened. So patients want to read about the interaction of them and the staff or the family and the beloved ones, what happened between and with them. If it's, um, so it, the general recommendation is to describe this just without any judgment. Thank you very much, Peter, for this uh, introduction of the IT diary. And here we can see the first diary entry from Mr. Smith's wife. My dear, I am standing at your bedside and cannot believe it. It happened so fast and now you are in critical care. The doctors and nurses are all very kind. They explained that thing with your lungs and why you require so many drugs and machines. I love you so and I hope that you will be healthy soon. We will manage this together, my dear. I love you. Great. Writing for family members um, means um, establish a communication, as I said, or as writing a letter, for example. And it probably helps them um, to cope with their own feelings by writing down their feelings. So anxiety is in the diary, but not anymore in the, in the mind or in, in the heart. So it relaxes or helps them to, to relax a little, a little bit. And um, it is established a contact, a kind of communication to the patient, which is very, very important for them. And we really recommend to ask the family to participate in writing diaries every day, if it's possible, or every couple of days. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And if you um, have written the first entry, it is very important to go on and on and on with, um, further, di uh, with further entries in the diary. Um, as you said, Peter, it is very. Uh, it makes sense to to do this every day, um, at least every second day. And here's the next entry, dear Mr. Smith, you are the fourth day on the ICU and the third day that I am taking care of you. Your lungs are improving, and we are reducing your sleeping drugs. 
This morning, when I called you by name, you twinkled with your eyes. We are trying to wean you from the ventilator, and you seem to be a little stressed. Maybe you remember the situation when you came into hospital? I'm talking to you all the time, explaining what is going on. You seem to cal calm a little bit. Your children arrived and were talking to you. They hung up pictures of your dog and the grandchild, and finally you opened your eyes. Welcome back, Mr. Smith. Nurse Rodriguez, it's October the 14th. Yeah, great, thanks. Here is a special form, a phrase. <clears throat> uh, we call this reflect reflexive questions. Maybe you remember the situation when you came into the hospital. This stimulates <clears throat> patients to think about the, the situation and think about possible perceptions they, they had. Um, we know that patients um, misunderstand a lot of uh, activities on the intensive care unit and they cannot uh, separate between real and uh, delusional memories or hallucinations and they mix it and they cannot say what was real, what was um, just imagination. And here we, we stimulate a, a reflection about the situation um, and this maybe help patients to different differentiate between reality and dream. Dear Mr. Smith, you are still at the ventilator and sometimes you seem to be a little bit confused. When I asked you, you wrote something about spiders and strange persons in the room. You seem to be scared and delirious. Unfortunately, this often happens to critical care patients. The brain is affected by, by infection and does not work properly. We evaluated the reasons and we changed the central venous line and you are receiving new antibiotics. Today, you were sitting the first time in a chair and this seemed to improve your cognition and condition. When your wife came in, she was so happy. She is sitting beside you, holding your hand. We, we all take care of you. Nurse Betty, October the 16th. Great, he is improving. <laughs> When it comes to delirium, it becomes difficult also in a diary. We recommend to explain delirium in plain words. So again, that the patient um, can understand what happened to him or her, unfortunately. It's not the, the patient's fault or guilt or whatever, um, but um, it's a side effect of critical care. So um, explain it that the patient can understand what happened. Mm -hmm. The next entry from Nurse Betty. Dear Mr. Smith, today was a busy day. You spent some hours in an examination in another department, and when you came back, you were sedated again. When you woke up, you became very agitated. You tried to pull out of some of these life-saving tubes, and you could not be calmed by words. To your own safety, we had to give you a calming sedating drug and apply restraints on your body. You looked very frightened. And I wonder what you were experiencing. I often told and repeated to you that you are in the hospital and safe and that we all take care of you. Slowly, you seem to relax. Nurse Betty on October the 17th. Betty had a hard day. Yes. <laughs> and Mr. Smith too. <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> so it's, it's very difficult to, to write about unpleasant situation. We um, uh, do applying uh, restraints on, on a patient is, is never an easy thing. But I think patients have the right to understand what happened and also explain restraints and, and the reason that led to, to the uh, restraints. It gives the patients a chance to understand what happened because a lot of patients think in their dreams that they are captured or tortured or whatever. And um, that there is a, a, a real situation behind allows them to, to um, different again between dream and reality. So please um, just report it without any judgment. Mm -hmm. The next entry, which was written by nurse Betty, good news, your lungs improved and we could remove the ventilator tube. Now you can breathe on your own and you can talk. When I asked you for your orientation, you knew that you are in hospital, but not why. Again, I explained the situation. 
You told me of strange dreams of being captured and a travel in a train. You said it would be very frightening and you were afraid of sleeping and in fear of this very vivid dreams. These experiences are common in delirium and I explained this to you. I wonder how much of these experiences and dreams and information will be remembered or will you be frightened of your memory? I asked you for your way of coping and you said it will need time and small steps. God bless you on your own way, Mr. Smith. Nurse Betty on October the 21st. Betty is a great nurse. Yes, Betty <laughs> is a really great nurse. I also thought that when I read it because it is very, um, it includes very much um, information. Yes, of course. She gives some, some kind of psychoeducation which she, <laughs> which she does. Yes. So far, we do not exactly know how the ICU diary works, but from clinical experience and also from limited evidence, we know that the diary tells a different story than um, that the patient um, might remember. So this is the only source of information that the patient has besides the information um, which uh, he is told by his staff and family. And this is something written down, something real, um, which describes the situation retrospective for the patient. And um, this might be very important because um, it helps to reframe the experience from traumatic to a different perspective. It might help to understand, as Peter said, that um, patient was not captured, but he had restraints for this reason that um, that is life-saving for him at the moment. And to get this perspective, it can, very, it can be very helpful to have this diary. The patient can retrace the process of segregation between factual and non-factual memories. And the diary can, um, can be some kind like, like a proof for this. And therefore it is very important additional to the information the patient gets from relatives. And it, of course, it would be very helpful that also um, patients have the um, possibility to talk to the staff of the intensive care unit. Yeah, thank so you. We, so we would strongly recommend from a clinical perspective to write a diary for delirious patients, of yes. course. Please do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you... Um, want to have further information about ICU diaries, just visit our website, icu-diary.org. Um, there you will find some templates, uh, examples how to write diaries and so on. And Teresa and I, of course, are writing a newsletter um, and um, every couple of months and sending it all over the world. So it's just for free. We are doing this in our free time without getting any money for it. Just we are believing it's a good thing, of course. All the, the examples of diary entries we presented to you are fictional, of course. We are writing diaries since more than 10 years now. And this was a mix of real diary entries <coughs> of, for several patients. Um, so um, it, it does not deal with a real Mr. Smith. There is no real Mr. Smith here in Germany. <laughs> Thank you very much. We hope that this will give you some uh, ideas, uh, impressions, how to write diaries for delirious patients. It's always a challenge, but we are convinced that it is a good thing and will help patients and families and staff. 